All right, guys, the Estrid Fusion event begins on April 4th. It's right around the corner, so now is as good a time as any to pump out this here video. This is going to be the ultimate guide for you beginner players out there to get you started with fusion events, teach you exactly what kind of resources you need to prep to be ready, and just overall get you prepared for what kind of challenges you might expect. These fusion events, very, very important to prepare for. The rewards from these, the legendary champs you get from these can really, really get your account off the ground. And so, especially for beginner players, these are going to be the bread and butter that get your account really up and running. Speaking of which, if you are a brand new player or you're looking to start off a fresh new Rage Shadow Legends account, make sure to do so by clicking the promo link down below to kickstart your account with a free epic champion and a crap load of starting rewards. Until April 11th, the promo link down below is actually supercharged for the Raid 5th Anniversary event, jumpstarting your account with $100 worth of free stuff right off the bat. This mostly comes from a fat second wave of rewards that you'll get at account level 25, including 5 epic skill tomes. And um, yeah, just a crap load of stuff. So get it clicked, goddammit. So here we've got our example fragment event calendar. This was like a fusion event from way back in 2023. If you're a veteran player, for some reason watching this video, make sure to drop any tips that you think up down below as well in the comments. Help the new players out, man. My very first tip would be, this is a crap load of events. Prioritize accordingly, okay? What exactly do I mean by that? I mean, get into the event, get the fragments, and then get the hell out, okay? Unless you're like a big spender, um, and you're looking to like max out a crap load of these events and you know farm legendary skill tomes and stuff like that then you're probably one of most players and most players are going to be trying to be as efficient as possible with their resources just get into the event get the fragments have a game plan go straight on to the next event right so first of all energy how much are you going to need over these two weeks well i don't know 20 maybe twenty-five thousand. A hell of a lot of energy, okay? So obviously, there are ways that you can reduce the amount of energy that you're spending, and we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But getting your hands on the basic farmable energy that you can get your hands on every day is going to be a bit of a minimum, and that is why, popping up the text over my head right here, I'm going to recommend that you're farming the 13,000 energy that's somewhat easy to farm over the course of this 14-day event. Getting this 13k energy should not be too difficult as long as you are playing actively. Consulting my notes real quick, you can be gathering up to 480 energy per day just from daily regeneration. What does that mean? It means spending your energy so that you always stay under the energy cap and you are benefiting from the passive energy regeneration. One energy every three minutes, about 480 per day. Next, you can farm an additional 440 energy per day max just by doing things like daily quests, lo uh, daily login rewards, that kind of thing. You also get a free energy refill portion that gets sent straight to your inbox every few days as long as you're logging in, right? And you should be saving these up for events. I only have three in my stockpile because I'm just the worst, but generally speaking, you should be going into fusion events with at least a good handful of these ready to go. And then once you've been farming all of that good stuff, bear in mind that various events during the fusion are also going to be rewarding energy as a reward as well. And so you can be holding on to these or if and when you need them. And so all of this should come together to make farming yourself 13,000 energy completely for free just by being active. Not too difficult, right? It should be achievable as long as you're being active every day throughout the fusion event. Now it is pertinent to note that this 13,000 energy is going to get you about halfway, okay? It's it's not going to get you all the way there. It's a damn good head start, though. However, you will be also wanting to go into these events with at least 1,500, if not 2,000 gems also ready to go. These gems are going to be your backup. They're going to be your failsafe. Expect to spend at least a thousand, if not more, on energy alone. And just in case you are an extremely new player, what do I actually mean by that? I mean, head into the shop, which the button is actually behind my uh, camera just here. Head on into the gem shop and you want to be picking up these full energy refills right here. Of course, you only want to be buying these as a last resort, but this is where you buy them if you started playing Raid like a couple weeks ago and you haven't actually inspected the gem shop just yet. Why do we recommend stockpiling at least 2,000 gems going into these events? Because yes, you'll be spending a hell of a lot of these on energy, but you might also be spending a bunch of gems during these events on classic arena refills because there are going to be some arena related events. You're going to need to be blasting those. And you might also need to get your hands on some experience boosts as well. So these experience banners over here, if you don't have a current experience buff active, these can also help you out quite a bit when it comes time for the champion training events. And you know, man, we'll actually start there with the classic arena takedown events, right? There's usually going to be a couple of these. And I think they're the easiest one to start with because honestly, they're the easiest event. It's more just a matter of time to get these done. They're not super, super resource intensive. The only caveat with these is that the higher rank you are in arena, so if you're in the gold bracket, for example, then you're going to be earning more uh, tournament points 
per victory in the arena. And so you're going to get to the fragments a little bit more efficiently. However, you should not be entering the gold bracket and the gold ranks uh, on the arena ladder unless you're ready to compete with, you know, arena teams of 200,000, sometimes 300k plus in power level at the least. This means that if you're a newish player, your account's like two, three months old, you're probably not ready for the gold bracket. Just stay away, stay in silver. I actually know some players who have been playing for like half a year and they just stick to the silver bracket as well, you know, so really approach the gold bracket with caution. I would say at least try and be in the silver brackets and just kind of stay there, stay steady. And you can do just fine in these classic arena takedown events. I should also mention that there's two of these in total, so just be ready to blast the crap out of those. The only thing about being in the silver bracket is that that of course you're getting less points in these events because you're in the silver bracket, right? It's just a lower rank. And that means that you might need to be spending some gems for arena refills so you can just kind of make up the difference, right? And just play more arena games overall to farm the necessary points. Which again, is what that 2000 gem minimum stockpile is really all about. Next up, we have the dungeon tournament events. This is always going to be the four core dungeons. So there's going to be a dragon tournament, an ice golem tournament, a fire knight tournament, and a spider tournament. And you will need approximately 2,000 energy per event, or per tournament, rather. Ideally, you want to be farming around the middle bracket or higher in terms of difficulty in these tournaments. So around stage 14, 15, 16, Fire Knight, for example. Same with Spider, same with Ice Golem, same with Dragon. The higher, the better. Those are around the minimum stages that you want to be clearing to get these done in a relatively efficient fashion. Around 14, stage 15 plus. Now, right away, this is where things become a little bit of an efficiency game, right? Because the Dungeon Divers events can also be completed while you are hitting the Ice Golem Dungeon and the Dragon Tournament Dungeon, right? You want to be double dipping in these events as much as you possibly can. Otherwise, the Dungeon Divers events on their own are going to be setting you back an additional 5,000 energy, which sucks like crazy. So, needless to say, whenever the Dungeon Divers event is active, that's when you really want to be blasting the hell out of, for example, here, the Dragon Tournament on this happy little calendar, like halfway through the Dragon Tournament, the Dungeon Divers event goes live. That's when you really want to be blasting the crap out of the Dragon Tournament, right? Because then you're double dipping between the Dragon Tourney and the Dungeon Divers event. And likewise, as soon as the Dragon Tournament ends, okay, there's a little bit of a gap here in this example image between when the Dragon Tournament ends and when the Ice Golem Tournament begins. This is like a dead space where you really do not want to give a damn about farming the Dungeon Divers event, right? Because you're no longer double dipping. It's very, very uh, energy inefficient to be spamming your energy into dungeons when you're not earning points towards the Dragon Tournament or the Ice Golem Tourney. So this is where you'd want to take a break, just find the classic arena takedown, and then when the Ice Golem Tournament begins, you'd want to blast it all over again and really double dip into the Dungeon Divers event and the Ice Golem Tourney at the same time. Long story short, you want to overlap your progress in any of the Dungeon Tourneys with the Dungeon Divers events. That's really all there is to it. It's going to be much, much more energy efficient that way. Next up, we have the Champion Training Tournaments. I'm just going to add the numbers on here right now. And oh dear, boys, it's another 5,000 energy on average per Champion Training event. This is the Champion Training Tournament and the... Where's the other? Okay, there it is. The other Champion Training event down here. Now, it doesn't have to be like this. Very, very expensive to farm the fragments in the champion training events and tournaments using only energy. If you're sitting on a few hundred experience brews, then there's really, really good ways that you can kind of blast level your guys in the tavern without ever having to spend energy in order to just really, really farm up a crap load of event and tournament points. But of course, these events are all about leveling up your champs, ranking up your champs, which is why you want to pre-level as much food as you possibly can. If I just take a quick peek in my vault right here, I've made something of a start of this over the past few days where I've just pre-leveled leveled a crap load of guys to max uh, rank 4. So a bunch of guys here sitting at level 40, ready to rank up in the tavern and earn me a crap load of free tournament points. I've got a whole bunch more food as well that's kind of sitting around in my uh, active collection, just kind of ready to go and be used as food as well. A lot of guys leveled to max level, uh, max rank 3, so level 30. And that's just the best possible way that you can really prepare for these tournaments. But that's not all, right? There's a very, very key difference between the champion training tournament and the champion training event. And this was something that I'm glad that I learned quite early on, right? As a beginner player, really, really important to know this. The champion training tournament and the champion training event, you earn points in these by, of course, leveling and ranking up your champions. But there's a key difference with the champion training tournament. There's extra ways that you can earn points in this thing, right? Most importantly, 
skill books, okay? If you're sitting or collecting epic skill tomes or legendary skill tomes, okay, and you have some ready to use, you must save those skill tomes to spend them during champion training tournaments. It's free points and it's a hell of a lot of points. Spend your skill tomes, especially the epics and the legendaries during the champion training tournament, and it will drastically reduce the amount of experience brews that you're gonna be spending during these and the amount of energy that you're having to spend for leveling, right? Same thing with ascending your champions as well, by the way. Ascending your champions uh, using the, the potions. It doesn't reward nearly as many tournament points, but it's a little bit of extra something. And so if a tournament is coming up and there's a fusion event coming up in like a week or something, and you're thinking about ascending your champions, then honestly, it's worth just holding on to those potions for just that little while longer to get those extra free tournament points. The champion training event, however, is just gonna be much, much more farming intensive because it's all about ranking up champs. It's all about leveling champs. And unless you've got like a crap load of food saved up or a few hundred experience brews that you can use in the tavern to make this nice and quick and smooth and easy. For example, if you're a beginner player like me, I have like 50 of each experience brew. So this is gonna be very, very energy intensive for me. I've got a lot of farming to do. And if you're a new player, then you probably will too. Next up, we have silver requirements, right? Gonna go ahead and pop my next little piece of recommended text up on my camera right now. That is to enter into these fusion events with at least 25 million silver. This alone will not be enough to get you through all of the artifact events um, and artifact enhancement events that are scattered throughout the fusion. They are very, very expensive and we'll go into exactly how much they cost on average in just a second. But 25 million silver will be about enough to get you started, okay? You're gonna be farming a lot of silver throughout the uh, fragment events anyway and the fusion events. There are also other ways to earn silver on the fly, like crafting crappy items in your forge and then kind of just selling them off, right? Or at least selling the bad ones off, which is, I don't know, most of them. Anyhow, long story short, 25 million silver is a damn good starting point. Ideally, you're going into this with like double or triple that, and then you're sorted and you're fine because the artifact enhancement events are going to set you back 15 to 20 million silver on average per event. They're quite costly. They're extremely annoying, especially if you're a new player like me. I'm having to scrimp and save and, and man micromanage the hell out of my gear and sell anything that's even just a little bit, you know, below average, which is most of it, you know. Uh, <laughs> prepping for these has been a real pain, but I think I have enough in the bank to, uh, to be able to get through these for the upcoming Estrid event. And the next resource I would highly recommend that you enter into these fusion events with is a minimum of six sacred shards. Now, this is painful, okay, but it's also kind of necessary. Otherwise, you're going to be spending a crap load of void and uh, ancient shards in order to get your way through the most painful events of these fusion events. And those are the summon rush event. We actually have a summon rush event here and a summon rush event here. What we would normally have is, I think normally, we would have one summon rush event and then one champion chase tournament. And they have quite similar mechanics going on, but they have a couple of key differences that we're going to get into in just a sec as well. TLDR is summon rush events. You gain points based on the quality of shards you are cracking open, okay? And so if it's going to be a couple of summon rush events, you're going to want six sacreds going into both of these. So it actually be 12 sacred shards. And so I wouldn't be ready for these events at all. So I'm really, really hoping that with the upcoming Estrid fusion, it's going to be one summon rush event and one champion chase tournament. I'm much, much better prepared for that. Um, if it's if it's double summon rush, that's really, really going to hurt me. And in fact, if you're really a brand new player, I'd recommend just skipping the fusion event completely if you don't have uh, the sacred shards required to get these events done. Now, you can be cracking open void shards during summon rush events. They do give a pretty damn good amount of points, right? Because again, summon rush events, you're getting points based on the quality of shard that you're opening, not the champion that comes out of the shard, which is a key, key difference. It's going to become clear why in just a second. But generally speaking, you want to be holding onto void shards, your purple shards, for uh, two times legendary events, right, where you're twice probable to crack open a legendary champ from a void shard. Honestly, kind of a similar deal with ancient shards as well, especially if you're an, a newer player. And so for summon rush events, sacreds are your friend. Now, what if? We're just going to imagine here that this little box that I'm drawing right now is a champion chase tournament. Okay, so we've got one summon rush event down here, and we have one champion chase tournament over here. What then? Well, then the good news is you only need the six sacred shards to get the summon rush event done. And this one is 
It's it's done. It's out the way. You don't have to worry about it, right? What about the Champion Chase Tournament? What is so different about these? So as a newer player, it's really, really important to know that the Champion Chase Tournaments, which we've drawn so beautifully on up and over here, you get points in these tournaments based on what champs you are opening from your shards. What does that mean? It means that while in a summon rush event down here, opening up a green mystery shard, okay, the crappiest shard in the game, will give you one point no matter what, okay? It'll give you basically nothing, okay? One single point per mystery shard. However, in a champion chase tournament, you can get a rare champion from a mystery shard, okay? And it will give you 10 points. Now, it's quite unlikely that you crack open a rare, but if you're spam opening like a few hundred mystery shards, chances are you're gonna open up a fair amount of rare champions. And so the value of the crappier shards in the game, the mystery shards, is greatly amplified during champion chase tournaments. And so while it's quite tough to get through these champion chase tournaments using only <laughs> mystery shards, they're going to give you a damn good head start at least. You probably still need to throw some void shards and, you know, maybe some sacreds and ancients in there as well to get it done. But just so you know, always be saving all of your void shards if and uh, if and when possible for these champion chase tourneys. Another sweet little trick you can do during the summon rush events is actually link them together with the champion training tournaments, right? Champion training tournaments, you're trying to farm levels and ranks on your champs. During the summon rush, or most importantly, during the champion chase events, where you're opening up a crap load of really garbage champs, okay? Lots of level one champs, stuff like that, lots of commons and uncommons. What you could be doing is feeding all of those crappy champions that you're opening in something like a summon rush event. You can be feeding those champions to your food champs in the tavern during champion training tournaments, okay? And just getting some free levels, right? And so in that sense, you're at least getting to double dip a little bit as well. Yeah, it's little efficiency tricks like that, little efficiency hacks like that, that are gonna make a big, big difference over the course of a 14 day event spree like this. And that's about all I got, man. In a few days, the Estrid event is gonna go live. I will be doing a full fusion plan for that one, talking about how I'm gonna be double dipping each event relative to that, uh, to the specific details of the Estrid. Uh, fragment event calendar and hey that'll be a happy little video so make sure you stay tuned for that again if you are a veteran player make sure to drop any kind of tips tricks and uh and hints and stuff down below in the comments man just to help out any of the newbies that are watching this if you are looking to kickstart a fresh new rachel legends account make sure to do so by clicking the link down below at the top of the video description to jump start your account with a free epic champ and a whole suave of starting resources for now thanks for watching everybody hope you also enjoyed this one i'm gonna catch all of you all to stay a tad bit later man